So today's lecture is about um, adders. Um, so first we'll talk about adders and then we'll talk about a few other things, um, basically modular logic. So adders are important in computers, digital systems where numerical data is processed. And um, we want to talk first about the fundamentals of a basic adder operation. Um, we have what we call a half adder that we're going to talk about, and we have what we call a full adder. A half adder where is where you add two bits together, and a full adder is where you add um, two bits and a carry bit. And then we'll discuss um, a ripple carry adder, which is also called as a parallel adder. Um, so those are the things we're going to talk about today. So half adder, what is a half adder? Um, Basically, we want to look at the basic binary addition rules for that. If we add 0 and 0 together, we get a 0. 0 plus 1, we get a 1. Zero plus a, uh, 1 plus a 0, we get a 1. And a 1 plus a 1, we get a, a 0 and a carry of a 1. And we know that from previous um, addition rules. So. Those are operations that are performed by a logic circuit called a half adder. That's what we've, um, so these are operations that we've covered before. And in order to do these operations, we've been doing them by hand. But in order to do these operations, we need a circuit, a logic circuit, and we call that logic circuit a half adder. Now we can design that circuit using basic gates, and we'll show you how in a second. So the definition of a half adder is that it accepts two binary digits on its inputs and produces two binary digits on its outputs, a sum bit and a carry bit. And this would be the symbol that we use for a um, half adder. It will have two inputs, A and B coming in, and it will produce a sum output and a carry out. So a sum and a carry for its output bits and a a and B for its input bits, based on the basic calculation we just saw on the previous slide. So for the logic um, of the half adder, the expressions can be derived from the previously mentioned functionality of that half adder. Um, so the first thing we want to do is look at a truth table for it. So if we have two inputs, we will have four combinations, um, because again, we do two to the power of n and n at this point is two, so it'll be four combinations. So we have 00011011. We will have a sum and a carry. And like we said before, zero plus zero is a zero with a carry of a zero, because we're gonna assume the carry is a zero. Since we added two bits together, it gave a zero sum, which means a carry out is gonna be a zero at that point. Zero plus one is a one of course, then the carry is going to be a zero. So we're going to assume a zero carry. One plus zero is a one again, and we're going to assume a zero carry. And then one plus one we said is a two. So it's a zero sum and a one carry. So that's basically what we have there. So those are our, um, that's our truth table. Now, if we have a truth table, we know that from the truth table, we can easily now create a circuit. And one easy way to create that circuit is to plug in each one of these outputs into a K-map and create a circuit from there. So, or we can create just a um, equation from the um, two output columns if it's easy to create. Now, looking at C out, we only have one min term, and that's easy to pull out what that min term is right there from this um, input. So C out is a one single um, one on the output, and that means that's just a single min term. So that min term is um, present at the input one one. So C out is just simply the min term one one, which is a b um, sum is a 0, 1, 1, 0, and we know that truth table is the exclusive OR gate, so sum is simply A exclusive OR with B. So just because this was a simple circuit, you can easily figure out what your equations are. Now, if this was a little bit more of a um, complex truth table, you would have to put 
sum and carry out into a k-map, like I said earlier, and create those equations from the k-map. So looking at those two equations, then I would have AB coming in and um, into the AND gate for the output carry and AB coming in into the exclusive OR gate for the sum. And that would be my logic circuit for the half adder. So if I drew just a box around it, and forgive my horrible drawing right here, that becomes my half adder logic circuit. Now the full adder, basically the definition for that is it accepts two input bits and an input carry and generates the sum output and the output carry. So basic difference between the full adder and a half adder is that the full adder accepts an input carry where the half adder does not. So the half adder just adds two bits together, whereas the full adder will add three bits together, one of them being an input carry from a previous stage of addition. Um, because if you recall, if we are adding one zero with one one, for example, for the first two bits we're adding together, zero plus one is a one. For the second two bits, let's say we're gonna add another zero one over here. For the second two bits, we're gonna add one one together as a zero carry one. So you'll see for the third column, I'm actually adding three bits. I'm adding the zero and the one, and then I have a carry from the previous stage, which is gonna give me a zero and another carry, which then falls down to be a one at the end. So I need something that allows me to add the two bits from number A and number B, but I also need to be adding the carry in from the previous stage. So that's what the full adder does. Here's the symbol for the full adder. You'll see that I have the inputs A and B on this symbol, and I also have an input carry that would give me the carry in from a previous stage, and that produced the sum and the carry out at this point. So those are my two outputs. So still my outputs look the same, but in this stage I have a carry in coming in from a previous stage. Now my truth table looks a little bit different because now I have three inputs and remember again how to figure that out. So now two to the n becomes two to the three, which means I have eight combinations. So these are the eight combinations that I have, zero to seven. And for that, I figure out what my sum and carry are. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is going to be a 0 carry 0. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is a 1 with a carry of a 0. If I look at this one, one 0 plus 1 plus 1 is 2, which is a 0 carry 1, and so on. So if I add 1 plus 1 plus 0 here, it's 2, which is a 0 carry 1. And for the last stage, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, which is a 1, a sum of a 1 and a carry of a 1. So let me erase all this over here now. So with this, I'm not going to just simply be able to get my equations off of the truth table because I need to be able to go ahead and um, minimize this equation if I'm going to build a circuit from it. So what I'm going to do is plug these into Carnot maps. So for the sum, I plug in the ones from I'm going to plug in the ones from my truth table into this Carnot map. I find that I have ones in a zigzag fashion. And as you work through this um, K map, you will find out that when you see ones in a zigzag fashion this way, or actually in a zigzag fashion this way, they'll end up being exclusive OR gates. Um, but let me show you how that comes about. So um, this is the equation that comes out because if you have single ones like this in these um, cells, you can only group these on their own. There's no ones next to them in this K-map to group them with. So you're gonna have to group these ones on their own as single ones. Um, because of that, each one of these ones is a sim simply a min term. So um, for the blue one right here, um, that one is a bar 
B bar C in, which is this first term right here. Um, for the green group, um, that single one is A bar B, C in bar, which is this term right here, and so on. So I'm not going to go over that because you should know um, how to group in KMAPS by now. Um, if you don't, you can go watch the video um, on my YouTube channel that discusses um, three variable KMAPS and how to group in three variable KMAPS. So this is the equation right now. This is the um, all the midterms grouped together. So this is the equation. Now the next step, you'll see that you can actually look at this equation and you can start um, combining. You can start taking common factors. So if I take C in and C in, I end up with A bar, B bar, or AB. And if I take C in bar and C in bar common factor, I end up with A bar, B, or AB. Now this looks like an A exclusive or B, and this looks like an A exclusive nor B. Um, so I represent those as, I, as they look right now. Now looking at this, if I actually just substitute A exclusive or B, let's say if I say that is equal to D, right? That leaves me with an equation. I'm going to write it up here. That leaves me with C in ended with D bar or C in bar ended with D. Now that in its own right looks like C in exclusive or D. So then all I have to do is substitute D equals A exclusive or B back into the equation, and then I get that equation on the bottom. Right here. So that's all I did. So you can see then that zigzag I mentioned earlier up in the K-map actually ends up being C in exclusive or A exclusive or B. I mean, I can end up rearranging this equation just to make it look nice and sane to me um, and say it's A exclusive or B exclusive or C in. And that would be the equation that I have. So that would be my sum term, equation for A full adder. Um, or I could have just said, well, you know what? The full adder must add two input bits and the input carry. And for the half adder, the sum of the input bits is A exclusive or B. Um, so if we add the carry in um, the result of the A, um, B addition, uh, it also would need an exclusive or function like the A and B needed. So we can look at it logically, you know, if we needed that for the half adder, then we'd need it for the full adder. So the sum for the full adder would then be the A exclusive or B exclusive or C in. So we could logically think of it, if we needed exclusive or for the half adder, then if we're doing three bits for the full adder, then we'd need the exclusive or for the addition for the full adder for all three bits. So we can logically deduce that um, for the full adder as well. Now for the carry bit, we plug in the truth table into a K-map, and this would be the K-map for the carry bit. We group the ones, and this would be the equation for the carry bit. Um, and so, or we could also look at it another way, and that way would be if you recall the circuit for the half adder, this was the circuit for the half adder, the orange one. This is half adder, and we take the output of one, plug it into the other, and we OR the carryouts together, and the sum goes into another exclusive or to create the final sum. 
So we either do it by k-maps and we get our final answer or we just logically think of it as two half adders combined together, one leads into the other, we sum our carryouts to get our final answer. So either logically think about it or through k-maps get the final answer, we, we get the same result. So this one is just saying we can look at the full adder as two half adders. So now let's look at parallel binary adders. So if we have two or more full adders connected um, to form uh, together, they actually end up forming a parallel, what we call a parallel binary adder. Uh, a single full adder is capable of adding two one-bit numbers um, and an input carry. So for numbers more than one bit long, which we end up adding, of course, we don't just add one bit numbers, we need uh, more full adders. So when we add these two bits, let's say these two bit numbers together, we 1 plus 1 is 0 carry 1, 1 plus 0 plus the carry 1 is 0 and another carry 1. So that carry bit from the second column becomes our final sum bit. And that up there on the top is our carry bit from the right column, the, the first um, two bits added together. So a circuit to add these two numbers, and we want to generalize, so let's look on the bottom um, left-hand side here. We're going to call the first digit A2, A1, and the second digit B2, B1, and then our sum terms will be sum 3, sum 2, sum 1, because we want to generalize our numbers. So we're going to have a first full adder, um, and we're going to say that A1, the first column, A1, B1 go in, and our first carry-in will be a 0 bit because as you can see over here, zero carry coming in from, because there's no stage prior to A1 and B1. So that will be a zero carry coming in. And it produces a sum one. And then we need a second full adder to add these two bits together. And that will take A2, B2, and then the carry out of whatever carry out comes from here will be added to this stage. So that's basically what we draw on the circuit. So the carry out from the first stage goes into the carry in of the second stage and that would produce our sum two and the final carry out becomes our sum three which is what happened over here in our example from last time, from the last slide. So that was basically a very simple form, a two-bit form of a parallel adder. Now, if we wanted to extend that to a four-bit parallel adder, this is what we do. We'd basically take four parallel adders, and then the first bit, we'll call it C0, because it's coming in from our zero stage. that doesn't exist, right? Because we're starting at stage one, bit one of our number. And then we'll have, here's our stage one, stage two, and stage three, and stage four, because it's a four bit parallel adder. And then every carry out goes into carry in of the next stage. And then our final carry out, which is our C4, becomes actually our sum five in the end. So if I wanted a eight bit parallel adder, I put eight of those stages to get our eight bit parallel adder. It's that simple. Now a ripple carry adder is basically an adder in which the carry output of each full adder is connected to the carry input of the next higher order stage and each stage is one full adder. So the sum of the output carry of any stage cannot be produced until the input carry occurs. Okay, so the final sum can't be occur until the input of the previous stage occurs. This causes a time delay in the addition process. And basically, the adder is the previous slide. So basically, the ripple carry adder is the parallel adder. 
So here's an Mbit um, ripple carry adder, and you see it's very similar to the previous um, full adder. And uh, it, all it has is just you have some dotted line here. You have a dotted line here. And what that does is it tells you that it could be any number of um, bits, basically. Okay, and then it ends at n minus 1, and that's all that says. Now let's look at an application um, of using full adders. So um, let's look at a voting system, supplying numbers of yeses and no votes for full voters. We need uh, two parallel adders to add the number of yeses and no votes. And we probably need uh, maybe two half adders also, but we could uh, probably use full adders with the carrying of zero for those. Um, we're gonna need four switches. Let me pull the graphics up. Uh, we're going to need four switches. We're going to need to connect those to uh, power supply VCC. We're going to need the 1K resistor to limit the current coming in. And we're going to need to probably connect 10K resistors to ground um, to connect those to the um, full adders uh, inputs. We're going to connect then the uh, those inputs to the full adders. We're going to have the top input connected to the A and B inputs. And we're going to have C in connected of the top two. And then we're going to have the C in connected to zero for those two top two full adders. And then we're going to have the bottom two switches connected um, to the bottom. So these are our um, adders one and two. And then adders three and four, we're going to have the bottom two switches um, all the bottom to the bottom switch inputs connected to them and that way when the switch is on the top input when it counts yes um, the top two adders will count them when it counts no the bottom two adders will count them adders three and four will count them now all the CNs are um, entered as zero because we don't have carry-ins from previous stages. So we're just going to count um, the carry-ins as zero. So that's one way to design it. We could have put half adders up here, but we're using full adders. Now, once we have that, that means um, the top two adders uh, can count. Um, the first one can count up to two and the second one can count up to two votes. And the third and the fourth can also each count up to two votes. Um, now what we have is parallel adders on the outputs and we have a sum and carry out and a sum and carry out for each and what we have on the output level is we have two parallel adders and each of those have two sets of inputs A and B which means that um, full adder 1 and 2 those outputs can go into A and B and pr produce an output sum um, that goes then into a BCD to seven segment decoder um, same with the second parallel adder and th that result will go into a seven segment display as well as the um, second BCD to seven segment display and we'll label the top one as yes and the second one as no so what this circuit then gives us is the number of yes and no votes that will be provided from um, some voter um, switches that will tell us um, how many votes were yes and how many votes for no from four different voters. Um, very simple design uh, using full adders and parallel adders um, and a couple of BCD to seven segment, BCD binary coded decimal to seven segment decoders and a couple of seven segment displays. And of course, there'll be resistors between the BCD segment displays. So that was it for this um, time. And next time we will go over decoders, encoders, and uh, multiplexers.